promoting your home studio. It can be a little bit daunting, a little bit confusing. It's hard to know exactly what to do. So today I'm gonna share with you exactly how I've done it. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Promoting yourself can be uncomfortable. Some a lot of people have a difficult time figuring out how to promote themselves. That makes them uncomfortable, makes them feel sleazy, used car salesman-y, you know. But there's a way to do it that is super effective that doesn't feel to door-to-door -door sales many. So today I want to go over how I've done it and how I've gotten where I am uh, in terms of a marketing and promoting your studio. Now there are a bunch of different facets that go along with this. There's a bunch of social media stuff. There's a lot of word of mouth. There's the kind of work that you do. There is the effort that you're putting into face-to-face -face meetings. There is uh, encouraging your clients to create content or anyone who's making music with you, encouraging them to take photos and videos, Insta stories, Snapchats, whatever it is while they're in your studio. Uh, and so there's a, there's a bunch of little pieces to this and not any one of them is really like the, the magic bullet, so to speak. So I'm just gonna start going down the list and just explain how I've done this and I hope you get something from it. Somewhere about 2014 or 2015, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk came out with a book called Crush It. Now, I've kind of fallen off the Gary Vaynerchuk bandwagon, but that book changed my life, like genuinely. Specifically the audio book, because he would stop every 10 minutes and go off on this crazy tangent. And it was all about how social media is the the newest best platform for marketing. And while I had been posting my work and photos of my studios on Facebook and Instagram for literally years or a decade at that point, it wasn't something that I really looked at as a tool to get clients. I was just like, I like my studio. I'm proud of what I've been able to create here. Here's a photo of it. Um, but I didn't really understand how to turn that into clients or turn that into a marketing situation. Let me take a step back. Rather than go down this deep philosophical rabbit hole, I'm just gonna tell you guys what I did and what I still do and how I think about this. The very first and most important thing is that my mindset is I don't want there to be a single person really on planet Earth, but you can start small in your town or in your state. I don't want there to be a single person that doesn't know who I am and doesn't know what I do. This is not an ego thing. This is not like a, you better know me. And no, this is a, there's a certain percentage of people that are going to hire you. It's a small percentage, like less than 1% probably. Uh, and so if you want one client, you have to be in front of 100 or 200 people. If you want 10 clients, you have to be in front of 1,000 or 2,000 people. Uh, and so this metric and then like figuring out how many clients I need to actually stay busy all year long, it's a lot. It's 50 or 60 clients, really, in order to stay busy. I need that many clients every year. Now, a percentage of those are going to be returning clients, but a percentage of them are brand new clients, first time I've ever worked with them. And so this means I need to be in front of 10 to 20,000 people a year. They have to see my content in order for me to stay busy all year. And once I realized this, just this principle alone, it totally changed how I approached all of my social media, how I changed all of my face-to-face -face interactions. This is when I started going and having coffee with absolutely everyone. When I first moved to Nashville, I hit people up and I would have three or four coffee meetings every single week with someone I hadn't met. And I would encourage you to do the same. Now, these coffee meetings weren't a sales pitch. It wasn't like a sit down, try to convince them to hire me. These meetings were a sit down, I just want to get to know you. I want to be your friend. I want you to know me. And if you decide to hire me in the future, awesome. So that, that was my goal, is to have either a physical or a digital handshake. Some interaction on Facebook, some interaction on Instagram, some interaction in person. And I look at these things like a, a handshake. This is us meeting and we're beginning our relationship. And then what I did and still do is I use social media to continually be in front of their face. 
over. I want to be in front of their face every day, every three days, every week. I want them to be constantly reminded that I exist. And then when they need the thing that I do one day, they, hopefully I'm the first name that pops in their head and they think to hire me first. That's the philosophy behind this. Now, I, I recently, this is kind of a wild one, but I recently uh, mixed and mastered for a band and the member of the band that hired me is someone from back home, from Illinois where I'm from, that I have known for 15 years. This is formally the longest, 15 years, 12 to 15 years, somewhere in that ballpark that I've known them. And I've been doing this the whole time and they finally hired me. So this is the other thing that I want to make sure I convey is this is a long game. This is not something that happens overnight. This is not something that you should get discouraged about if it's not working. This is a thing where you just keep doing this forever. Like for as long as you're doing this, and eventually it all works. Now, it's pretty common for me to have known someone for two or two to five years before they hire me or know who they are. Or we've had some interaction and then years later they hire me. That's super common. And I think this leads into the next part of like promoting what you do, constantly showing what you're working on. Not in a sleazy used car salesman kind of way, but I'm constantly showing music that I'm working on, sharing music that I've worked on that got released. And it's not like, a, hey, I did this for them. I can do it for you too. It's a, I'm pumped about this. I'm proud of this work. I hope you enjoy it too. That little mindset shift, I think allows, it really helps us come to terms with promoting ourselves. And it is received much better because it's not received as a sales pitch by people. And so it's so much easier to just be pumped about the work that you've done, share your accomplishments. You get a song that starts getting some good sh streaming numbers. It doesn't matter how small those numbers are, share that. And you just do this over and over and over and people watch that. And they watch all this stuff that you do. And sometimes they watch it for years and years. And eventually they're like, you know what? Let's, let's go with Colt, let's try him. So. How do you create good content? Well, that is probably something I should create like an actual course on. Um, however, there's a few little things to just think about. One, keep your space clean. Always cleaned up, always picked up, no clutter on your desk, no empty beer bottles or water bottles everywhere. Like keep it clean so that way at any given moment you could take a photo or a video and you don't have to stop and clean stuff and rearrange stuff in order to, to take that photo or that video. You could just do it right now. Pay attention to the layout of, of the studio and the aesthetic of it. Is Does it look aesthetically pleasing? I don't care if you've got a laptop on a single desk in your bedroom, literally. There's a way to make sure that that looks as good as it can look in a photo. Make sure your dirty clothes aren't on your bedroom floor next to your laptop. Make sure that the angle of everything is like, oh, you don't see the bed in the shot. You know what I mean? Like there's, you just spend a little bit of time thinking about this and figuring out what makes everything look aesthetically pleasing. And then the next thing is the photography side of it or the video side of it. Now, the number one thing these cell phones are so, so good these days. Like, I started everything with a cell phone. I started this YouTube channel with a cell phone. And the number one thing that keeps people from creating good looking content is not even what cell phone they have. It's all that dirt and grime on that lens. See, that? I don't know if you can see this, if that's coming through in video, but we all are grabbing our lenses. So all you gotta do is before you shoot something, Take your shirt, wipe those lenses off. Make sure those lenses are perfectly clean. That's the number one thing you should do. It's habit, for me it's habit at this point. If I go to take a photo of my kid riding her bike, the very first thing I do is grab my phone, rub it with my shirt. Like, burn that in your brain because that is the number one reason why people's content looks like crap. Clean your cell phone lens. The next thing is 
lighting. Pay attention to how much lighting there is, how many different angles lights are coming from. Usually, kind of the more lights there are, not because of a brightness factor, but the more lights there are, the dimmer those lights can be, which makes everything more vibey. Like right now, I've got one, two, three, four, and then five, six, and then seven and eight lights in here, not including the film light. And this lets it just, there's a glow everywhere. And so there's, there's no hot spots. If there was just one light right in the center over my head, it would have to be super bright and the whole room would look really awful. Now you don't have to go buy film lights. I started this entire YouTube channel with some fluorescent tubes, some four foot fluorescent tube lights from like Lowe's or Home Depot. I used 4100K temperature bulbs. That's an important part of it if you're just starting. And I just hung them on the wall. So like in my old studio in my apartment, I would just hang them in between the panels here, literally just right between the panels vertically. And when I went to film or do some video or take a photo of my studio, I would just plug it in and I had two of them. So there'd be like one over here and there'd be one over here. You never saw them in the shots, but it cost me about 20 bucks to get set up and it made the content a million times more pro looking because the lighting was good. Now the next thing that I do a whole bunch and those of you that follow me on Instagram, you see this, I'm constantly with my cell phone taking a video of a mix that I've completed. Once the mix is approved, and I've done this with every song, I don't post every song, but I've done this with every song. Once the mix is approved, I will just take a video of the rig, hardware, doesn't even matter if you have hardware or not. Put up a bunch of plugins. If, you, if you're on Pro Tools and you just hold Shift while you're clicking on the different plugin inserts, they'll all stay up on the screen. So load your screen up with plugins so it looks all fancy and flashy and there's as much cool looking stuff as possible. Even if you don't have hardware, and if you do have hardware, awesome. And then I just hit play on whatever I think is the catchiest one minute section of the song and I will just pan around and film that song playing back. All the lights are flashing. You can see all the, a bunch of plugins. You can see a bunch of hardware. And this is really interesting because one, let's get on a side note here. Cell phones have, cell phone microphones have compressors in them. And there's a certain volume that you get to, and you should experiment with this in your room. There's a certain monitoring volume that you get to where the compressor on the phone makes everything really impressive sounding, especially on the iPhone. And so, for me, it's somewhere about 85 to 90 dB usually. It's, it's, well, maybe even louder than that, 91, 92 dB. It's pretty loud. But there's a certain range that when you pan around, the sound coming out of the speakers and hitting your microphone on your phone is triggering that compressor, and it just gives everything just an exciting feel. What's interesting about this is when people watch this, they know that that footage came from a cell phone. And they know that the sound they're hearing is coming from the cell phone because as you pan around, the sound changes. But if you get it in this target, in this right volume range, it is so much more impressive. And people commonly, if you go to my Instagram and look through these reels of, uh, of where I've done this, there's always comments being like, I can't believe it sounds this good from a phone recording. And that's part of the secret. I'm proud of my mixes. I think my mixes are killer. But part of it is conveying that through a phone and that volume level to trigger that compressor is part of it. The next thing would be tagging everyone in what you do. Now there's a lot of people that will tag me in stuff that I've worked on, but my name is hidden behind, like they'll post it on their Insta story and their name will be hid, my name where they tag me will be hidden behind the video and they're just doing it so that way it pops up for me so I can share it. The better way to do this is to tag people out in the open because the way that you get people to share the stuff that you've done is by them feeling like you're trying to promote them too. So when I share something, uh, whether it's an artist or whatever, I will tag every person that has anything to do with it and I will make sure that anyone that sees that content can see all those people that I tagged. Firstly, because I'm a good person and I want to promote them. When Lester plays drums for me on something, a drummer for Kelly Clarkson, and he plays drums on tons of stuff for me, I want to promote him. I want people to go follow him. I want people to go hire him because he's an awesome dude and he's one of the best drummers in the world. When whoever, so when Smith Curry plays 
Steel for me on something, and he's played with everyone from Keith Urban to Taylor Swift. When he plays Steel on something for me, I, he's one of the best dudes to touch the instrument. I want people to go follow him. I want people to hire him. It's, there's no protectiveness for me. I don't care if they go through me or not. I want those people to be as successful as possible. And when you tag someone out in the open like that, so that way people can click on their profiles, those people see it and they're much more likely to share it because they know that what we're all trying to do here is all of us promote all of us. And that's important, that team aspect of all of us are on the same team, we're all trying to promote this song that we worked on and we're all trying to promote each other. So just think about that a little bit when you're posting stuff on social media, how you're tagging people and how you're going about it. But I tag absolutely everyone when I post stuff like that. I will tag every person who played on it. I will tag the artist. I will tag whoever filmed the music video if I'm sharing something like that. I, I tag everyone that I can. And I'll even share or I'll even tag the gear companies because a lot of times the gear companies will share that stuff as well. And so this is part of this whole ecosystem and this super long-term plan where you just get in this system of everyone knowing who you are, everyone sharing everything, and it just keeps building and keeps growing the more you keep doing it. There's one more part to this, but before we get to that, I just wanna thank Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. There are links down below for a whole bunch of gear that I use. And if you guys use any of those links to purchase anything you need, uh, it costs you nothing extra, and it goes a long ways to help support this channel and help me keep making videos just like this. So anytime you need any piece of musical gear, you can jump on any one of my videos, click on any one of the links. Once you're on the site, you can click on, you can buy anything that you need, and uh, it helps me out a whole bunch. So thank you for using those links, and thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. Now there's one last part to this, and it is the general concept of being a good hang. Like, no ego, no cockiness, no my mixes are better than theirs, so they should have hired me. No, here's a song that I mixed and it's the greatest thing you've ever heard, so you should hire me. Like, really, really spend effort keeping that ego in check. I was real bad at this back in the day. Like, I was pretty bad, like, you know, 15 years ago. And I think it's really important to just be genuinely enthusiastic about what you're doing and share that enthusiasm. But don't ever do it from a place of, I'm better than them, I should have got that gig, they should have hired me, I can't believe, you know, like just really, really share this stuff from a point of view of, I'm pumped about what we as a team accomplished. Me as a producer and the artist and this drummer and this, we accomplished a thing that I'm really proud of. And I wanna share that with you. Like, pay attention to that mindset and make sure that you are always in a place mentally where you're just being enthusiastic and you're not ever discrediting anyone else or any other options because that turns people off faster than anything. The next thing I will say is when it comes to social media, set a schedule. For me, when I was really trying to build my social medias, it was once a day. I had to post every single day. Now that, none of us do enough cool stuff every day to post about, there's no way. I feel like probably from the outside looking in, it looks like I have a pretty exciting musical career. There is no chance I do enough cool stuff to post every day. So what I do is I bank content. Every time I'm doing something cool, I make sure I get four photos, five photos, which means you gotta take 20. But I'll take 20 photos so that way I'll have three or four or five that are good enough to post. I'll take four or five video clips so that way I have one or two that are good enough to post. And then I will not post all that stuff at the same time. I don't do this so much anymore, but especially when I was first building my platforms, I would spread that content out. And once you do this, you do this every time you do anything cool. And then you start rotating the content in. So then I'm posting a photo from this session, and the next day I'm posting a photo from that session, and the next day I'm posting a photo or a video from this session, and the next day I'm posting the second photo from this first session. And then and you just keep rotating stuff so that way you're, the impression that you're trying to give is that you are always busy, always working, 
never hungry or starving for work, um, and that people should hire you because you're great at your job and a lot of other people are hiring you. Like that's the marketing, that's the, the presentation that is best for marketing. I do this banking content because there, we, none of us do enough cool stuff every day. There's no way. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's one of my least favorite parts about social media is it, it looks like we're all doing cool stuff every day, but we're not. None of us are. Um, and I think it's important to know that, know that none of us are doing cool stuff every day, but also know that it is the game and this is how you play it. You play it by making it seem like you're doing cool stuff every day. That's probably going to be controversial to some people, and that's okay. Uh, this is my experience. This is how I've gotten where I am and how I've promoted my studio and promoted myself and gotten clients. So I hope that this helps someone. And um, subscribe if you haven't yet, and drop me a comment. Share with your friends if you got something out of this. Thank you for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.